back, everyone. Next up, we have Acme Lithium. It trades on the OTCQX under the symbol ACLHF and on the CSE under the symbol ACME and is a mineral exploration company focused on acquiring, exploring, and developing battery metal projects in partnership with leading technology and commodity companies. Acme is acquired or is under option to acquire a 100% interest in projects located in Clayton Valley and Fish Lake Valley, Esmeralda County, Nevada, and at Shatford Lakes, Bierce Lake, and Cat Euclid in southeastern Manitoba. Please welcome its CEO, Steve Hansen. Welcome back, Steve. How are you doing? Hi, Anna. Good to see you today. Great. We're excited to hear your presentation. The floor is yours. Great. Thank you. And uh, welcome, everybody. Great to be here today. Um, I'm going to share screen here. Um, again, my name is Steve Hansen. I'm the president uh, and CEO, and also the founder of Acme Lithium. I've been involved in the resource sector around the world for close to 30 years. I've worked on all four continents. I've been CEO of a number of companies as well as on boards and advisor to boards. And I'm really excited about what we've accomplished here at Acme Lithium in a very short period of time. So I'm gonna move forward here and uh, move along to some slides. And I think really what's unique about Acme is we've got one of the best portfolio projects that you'll see out there and really the focus here on how are we gonna create a domestic supply of lithium in North America? Um, uh, obviously demand for lithium ion batteries continues to escalate. We're in the right market here as people start to adopt hybrid and e electric vehicles. So again, the right trend is here uh, in the need for battery materials. And then we've got the right address. Um, we've got projects centered in Nevada, in and around the only lithium production in the US and we have projects that surround the only lithium production in Canada, and we're advancing these at a rapid pace. And then I've got a great small team that have worked again on all four continents around the world in developing these types of projects. So again, um, we welcome you on our journey. We're really excited about what's upcoming uh, in the short term and long term, and uh, look forward to delivering on these milestones over time. So uh, I'm gonna skip over some of the macro slides. Feel free to visit this, uh, web, this presentation on our website. Again, if you look at any of the numbers that are being put out there, uh, growth is going to be absolutely massive uh, in the need for lithium. Um, we take lithium for granted. I mean, we open up our, our cell phones, our tablets, our laptops. We use lithium batteries in our power tools. Um, and now, obviously, in our hybrids and electric vehicles. And we assume that, that lithium is, is found uh, commonly, in, and that's really not the case. Um, what is unique about lithium is that it's only found in a handful of countries. And really, we need to create a domestic supply here in North America. Um, some of the themes that we're following here, um, uh, it's now been named a crisis in Canada and the United States where we cannot rely on other countries to supply lithium to our domestic market. And so we're seeing movement by federal governments in the U.S. Uh, and Canada to make sure that we shore up supply. Um, Biden started with the Defense Production Act. Again, it was invoked uh, for critical minerals this past spring. Um, it's very rare that that takes place, but it really does suggest that we're in a crisis here for this particular commodity. And now the Inflation Reduction Act certainly will put some uh, dollars and energy into ensuring that we have critical minerals to meet demand as we build these battery factories throughout North America. Um, massive investment is needed, and uh, this trend is going to continue over time, and it sure bodes well for lithium as a commodity. Um, so I'm just going to move forward here in a few slides and, and talk about lithium in where it's found. In fact, 95% of lithium in the world is found in only four countries. Most of the production comes out of Australia, China, Chile, and Argentina. And so really the US and Canada and Europe for that matter are, are far behind in ensuring we have a domestic supply. And this is where companies like Acme come in. Again, we're hoping to be a part of the supply chain down the road. Uh, there are lithium deposits and assets uh, throughout uh, North America. The key here is how do we rapidly develop them and ensure we have this domestic supply. Uh, it's become an issue of not just economic security, it's become an issue of national security. Again, the uh, car manufacturers are rapidly growing their EV and hybrid businesses. Again, we need these, these core commodities domestically to make sure that we meet uh, that growing demand. 
lithium as a result of, of this perpetual deficit that we're facing globally, which has really become an issue, has, has now uh, become an issue for end users. Um, technology companies, auto manufacturers, large mining companies, processors are scrambling to find lithium uh, around the world. And so we've actually seen the price of the commodity skyrockets uh, over the last couple of years. Lithium as a commodity is actually up 20 times in about the last 24 months. It broke through an all-time high last weekend at $80,000. So again, we're continuing to see um, very favorable pricing for this as a commodity. So for those that are ultimately going to be miners, and then in the case of Acme, we're an explorer and developer, um, you know, the commodity price bodes well uh, where, where projects uh, can be economic uh, as you grow your business. And so we want to talk about, you know, the portfolio that I built here. And I think it's one of the best portfolio of lithium projects you'll see in North America. And there's some key attributes here that are unique to Acme Lithium. Clayton Valley in Nevada is one of the epicenters developed for lithium. It's the only place where lithium is produced in the United States at Silver Peak. Um, we have a, a project that's, t that's contiguous to the northwest of that uh, uh, operating production. And then we have a, a project that's just over the valley, over the foothills in Fish Lake Valley. And then in, in, in uh, southeastern Manitoba, we have projects that are in and around the Tanko Mine. It's the only lithium production in Canada. And we've got projects in that region. So what's great about North America is that we've got infrastructure, we've got power, we've got um, talented people. And we've got a market that's uh, available and ready for supply. There's battery factories being built uh, throughout Canada and the U.S. Uh, and there's obviously end users when it comes to technology companies and the auto manufacturers. So if we look at Nevada and we look at Clayton Valley here in the southwestern region, this is really the epicenter of development. Abbott Marley, a New York Stock Exchange company, $30 billion market cap or thereabouts, has the only production uh, in Nevada, um, and we've got a couple projects that are in and around that region um, that we're, we're rapidly developing. If we get a close-up here in that southwestern region, you'll see Silver Peak here on the satellite on the right-hand side. Um, again, you'll, you, the blue there are brine ponds where um, lithium brine is being evaporated and then processed and turned into lithium, and we are uh, a project area directly to the northwest. And then over in Fish Lake, just over the foothills, we have uh, a project area that we doubled the footprint there last year that we're actively exploring. Close up here of Clayton Valley, as you'll see, we are the northwest uh, neighbor to uh, existing production, the only production in North America. This is an ancient lake bed. Um, lithium is found in brine, basically salt water. And so uh, these are, are wells that are drilled into the ground. Um, brine is produced and then lithium is extracted uh, from that brine. Um, a lot of people talk about being a neighbor of Silver Peak and they're 30, 40 miles away. We, in fact, are the, their direct uh, neighbor to the northwest. Again, the same ancient lake bed that's created this uh, 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 geological uh, setting uh, where, again, lithium is found in, in brine. There's not many places in the U.S. you find this type of uh, formation. Um, and again, we're very fortunate to have this project in pro proximity to um, uh, a place where lithium has been actually produced here since 1966 for many decades. Um, we need two phases of geophysics, and those are basically pictures of taking a look at the ground, and ult ultimately that identified some targets which we believed had the potential for lithium brine. And then less, this last summer, we, um, we started a, a phase one drill program, and we were very fortunate in that we, we made a discovery. We found that we had lithium in brine, and we intersected some of the same lithology, the same intervals uh, that historically had been uh, produced in, in Clayton Valley, um, we're very pleased with how that program went, and obviously to make a discovery here is significant for our company. We've been rapidly moving forward on our next steps in Clayton Valley this fall and procurement and planning for a phase two program. This is an expanded program to develop our lithium discovery here. Um, we're going to be uh, mobilizing uh, our drill rig here in the next two to three weeks. We have all of our permits in place now. I've recently announced that in the next, last couple of weeks. Our crew is ready to go. I've got geologists on site right now uh, preparing and planning for this phase two program coming up in a couple of weeks 
uh, pads are being um, developed and we're upgrading the road as well. So this expanded program is our largest program to date in Clayton Valley. We're gonna be drilling a twin hole to that initial discovery hole, uh, a wider rotary hole that we'll ultimately be able to do a pump test from. And then we're doing three more exploration holes that are targeted based on our geophysics uh, in and around that initial discovery. So this is our largest program to date. We're very excited about it. We're hoping to commence this in about two weeks time. And then this will take us about 90 days of program and work here uh, focused on developing this discovery. So really exciting time for Acme shareholders and investors as we advance this project. And really the goal here, the milestone that I wanna achieve through this upcoming phase two program is ultimately an initial resource. So I get exciting to be an investor as we go through um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're hoping to have positive results here. We're going to know here in the next few months whether that's the case and exciting to deploy capital in this phase two program. One thing that's um, really interesting is how technology is changing our industry. And we've seen it in many other sectors. And certainly that's happening here uh, in the lithium sector. Uh, in the past, there were large brine ponds. Uh, large football field, field sized brine ponds where you allowed the brine to evaporate to leave the lithium behind. It's been used for decades and really is an old way to process lithium. And that's what's been done historically around the world in Latin America and certainly around Silver Peak. And a number of companies are developing new technology where you uh, extract lithium through a, a plant or a facility. It's called DLE, direct lithium extraction. And in fact, Schlumberger and Panasonic have a pilot plant neighboring us that they're testing right now to see if in fact uh, their technology can be successful in extracting lithium. It's worked at a bench scale and now they're building a pilot plant. So we're following it very closely. We believe our brine is gonna have some similarities to the brine they're testing. And again, looking forward to sending brine samples from this upcoming phase two program to various DLE technology companies to test and see if we can process it. Again, smaller footprint, lower capex, um, we can inject the, the water back into the ground. It's more environmentally uh, sensitive. And, and um, uh, you know, we want to be a good citizen and use best practices here. So this new technology is changing the way we may be producing lithium from brine. Very excited about some of the companies that we're following and, and hopefully going to be able to collaborate with down the road. If we move over to Fish Lake Valley, I mentioned that it's across the foothills uh, next to Clayton Valley. This is the valley next door. A lot of activity starting to happen here, and, and really, the really the core reason why we're seeing activity is is a world class project at Rhyolite Ridge. It's owned by an Australian company, a billion and a half dollar company. Um, they have a world class deposit there for lithium. Um, we are their neighbor uh, to the west. Um, Ioneers claims, uh, but our 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 uh, property area. Um, we've been actively exploring here over the last year. We've done some recent geophysics targeting um, clay, and we found some clay targets there. And we've had samples on surface that have been up to 600 ppm lithium. So we've got we've got some good good results, and uh, continuing to analyze that information. And I'll make a drilling decision on this project sometime later in Q4, early Q1 as we move forward. So. Um, we're aware of other companies that are very active in the region, and I believe there's going to be future discoveries made here by us and others. And so uh, as a project in Nevada, this is, uh, this is very exciting for us as well. What we like about Nevada is we've got infrastructure here. We've got uh, roads. We've got uh, access to talented people and equipment. Nevada has been recently named the top mining jurisdiction in the world. There's a long history of, of resource development here dating back over 100 years. So this is a great place for us to be operating. Um, we've got the support of, of uh, communities and, um, again, continuing to advance projects here is our goal here through the next couple of quarters. If we move forward into Manitoba, and the reason why I focused on this region, I looked at many projects throughout North America, and this is in central Canada, is it's the only place where lithium's currently in production at the Tanko mine. This has been a mine that's been off and on in production since 1969. It was bought by a Chinese company called Sino Mine, a very, very large company a number of years ago. We were fortunate enough to secure a land package to the south of the Tanko mine. You'll see in the upper central of this slide, the Tanko mine and their lease claims extend to the south. We're only about a mile to the south 
uh, with our Shatford Lake project. We are one of the largest land holders in and around the Tanko mine. This is hard rock, massive pegmatite fields throughout this region. This is host rock um, that ultimately could, could contain lithium. Um, we added to that footprint here uh, this past summer, increasing our land holdings. And again, we're one of the largest claim holders in the region. Um, a, a lot of activity taking place here. They're currently producing lithium, cesium, and tantalum in that Tanko mine. And again, we're hoping to make a discovery here sometime in the future. Um, we did uh, extensive mapping, structural work, sampling, uh, geophysics over the course of the last six months. And that's leading up to what will be a winter drill program. I'm in late stage permitting right now with the Manitoba government. We've got priority one, two, and three drill targets that we've identified. And my hope here is that we're going to begin drilling here in a winter drill program sometime uh, early in the new year of 2023. So active drill program happening here, looking for lithium in pegmatite. Very excited about this project. Uh, it's going to be a multi-million dollar project in phase one and phase two and hoping to make a discovery here in southeastern Manitoba. I believe there's going to be multiple discoveries made in this region. There isn't, there's, uh, it's not a fluke that the Tanko mine has been producing off and on since 1969. And I believe that um, we're going to see lots of activity in the region. We're seeing institutional investors. We're seeing strategic investors come to this region and uh, active drilling going on in the area. So look for news coming out here shortly on an update on our permitting. Again, we're in late stage permitting here in Manitoba and hoping to begin a winter drilling program here very shortly. And then about 15 miles north, we have a, another project in Manitoba that we're working in parallel. This will be part of a phase two drill program, and we're certainly hoping to update our shareholders on activities there. Highly prospective as well for lithium contained within pegmatites. Um, a few uh, sort of highlights from our, our team here. Yanni Sitsos was, was VHP, large, one of the world's largest mining companies for 19 years. He's been involved in over 200 transactions. He's on my board, an active advisor. Bill Firebend is a, a, an Arizona geologist. He's worked actively in Nevada and is a lithium expert. He oversees some of our work in Nevada. As I mentioned, I've been in business for close to 30 years, developing projects in all four continents um, and been very active in, in, uh, in advancing and developing projects like you see here. Um, a few of our consultants are, are, have a long history of, of resource development. Feel free to visit our website to see some of these names and review some of the people. So um, in conclusion, um, you know, I think there's some key things here that are going to be really interesting. We're in a, a huge mega trend for lithium and battery metals. That's not going to stop. Every number has been blown out of the water, and we're going to continue to see this sector grow uh, as we try to reduce carbon emissions. Um, you know, the writings on the wall, uh, we're seeing huge investment by Ford, GM and other auto manufacturers, tens of billions of dollars. And so we're going to need batteries and lithium to supply that market. We have one of the best portfolios in North America. Uh, our projects surround known lithium production. Again, there's only one place that produces lithium in the U.S. And we, we are uh, a neighbor of that project and only one place that produces in Canada. Now, again, rocks stop and start. It doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to make a world-class discovery, but um, it certainly bodes well uh, in, in the opportunity. Um, the best place to find a mine is next to an existing mine. So we're hopeful that we can continue to advance our projects over the course of this year and uh, excited to get working and deploy capital. We've got a great team, and then we're well-funded. We're backed by a number of key lithium institutions um, and funds um, that believe in our team, believe in our projects. Um, Wartaw's Electrification and Decarbonization Fund is our largest investor, as well as Lithium Royalty Corporation and others. And so I have enough capital to deploy in Canada and the U.S. to meet these uh, drilling programs upcoming in the winter. So I think, um, you know, we're, we're in, in a great position in this marketplace. We continue to seek joint venture partners from the technology and mining sector. Um, we continue to evaluate other opportunities. And I think 2023 is really going to be a milestone uh, year for us. Key catalysts coming up here in the next few months. And we're excited to deliver on behalf of our shareholders. Uh, as mentioned, we trade on the CSE under ACME. And then on the OTCQX, we were upgraded to the highest level of OTC this past summer under ACLHF. Um, thanks for taking the time to, to uh, uh, 
see this presentation today. I know I've gone through it quite quickly here, and uh, I thought I would go over some of the highlights. Feel free to reach out to me directly if you have some specific questions, and I'd like to open up the floor now to those that uh, have questions for me. Great job, Steve. Uh, yes, you mentioned this just recently about your portfolio of lithium projects in North America. So go over that again and why that's so significant. Well, if we go back to, uh, uh, I don't know if you can see all the slides here, and we, we go back to the slide of North America, as I mentioned, most of the lithium is, is being produced in other countries, and we need to shore up domestic supply. Mm -hmm. um, Nevada is a great mining jurisdiction for us to work, and we're in and around the only production in North America. And then in Manitoba, we've got a group of projects that are in and around the only production for lithium in Canada. So we're well situated. Um, the key here is to for us to explore. We made an initial discovery at Clayton Valley. The key here is to us to continue drilling, um, make discoveries, uh, get to an economic resource, uh, ultimately get to a, a preliminary economic assessment, and then pre-feasibility and feasibility. So as we meet these milestones, we are hopeful that we meet these milestones uh, based on success. Um, I think it bodes well for us uh, um, uh, for the future in continuing to attract capital and hopefully valuation. And we've seen that with some of our peer group, that as we advance their projects, We've seen uh, considerable increases in valuation over time as we meet these milestones. And you're about to commence a phase two drill program at your lithium brine project in Clayton Valley, right? So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. As mentioned in Clayton mm -hmm. Valley, we made an initial discovery this summer. We've been actively working on procurement and planning and permitting for that project. We now have all of our permits in place from the Bureau of Land Management and the Department of Mines. Uh, we've received those notices over the last 30 days. Um, our drilling contractor and crew and team are all ready to go. Uh, in fact, I've got two geologists on site right now that are, are preparing and planning for this upcoming program. Uh, the drill contractor and rig should be mobilized in the next couple of weeks. And we hope to have the drills turning here at Clayton Valley um, before, Chris, before uh, the holiday season. Um, it's a, um, a multi-stage program. We've got a test well that we're going to be dr drilling here, which we hopefully will be pump testing to understand the aquifer. Um, we need to understand the flow of brine. You can have grade, but you also need to understand uh, uh, pressure and porosity and permeability and how much brine is being produced um, from the aquifer. And then the exploration holes we're drilling in and around there ultimately understand the size and the scale of that resource. So. It'll take us about 90 to 120 days to complete that program. We're excited to get started. And uh, again, we're one of the only companies in North America that are, are drilling this type of brine project. We're unique in that way um, and looking forward to hopefully delivering on some success. Your Manitoba projects, they neighbor the only lithium production in Canada. So give us an update on your winter drill program. Correct. The Tanko mine um, is the only place where lithium is produced in Canada, and, and it's called LCTs, lithium, cesium, and tantalum is produced from hard rock pegmatites. I flew over there recently, and what's quite shocking is that Sinomine, the Chinese company, is actually putting ore, rock, into uh, bags, very, very large bags, about 30 tons per bag. Um, that's going on to flatbed trucks. Uh, it's being taken to the railhead in Canada, and that ore is being shipped across Canada to Vancouver. It's then being put on a freighter and being shipped to China for processing for their lithium needs. This is, this is very rare. Um, it's quite shocking that, in fact, uh, lithium ore is being shipped across Canada and, and, and then being shipped to China. And it really does say a lot about the desperation that the world has for this commodity. And also the fact that it can be economic to do that. And that's really due to these skyrocketing lithium prices. There is a scramble and, and desperation going on around the world um, that I've never seen in my career. I've never seen auto manufacturers, mining companies, uh, strategics go after lithium projects in the veracity that they have. So, um, you know, uh, Sinomine is... is uh, put in permits to upgrade that facility there. 
Um, again, our goal here, even though we're, we're, we're surrounding uh, that facility, we're hopeful that we can make a lithium discovery. We need to get drilling. Um, we're hopeful to start drilling before the end of December um, and hopefully to have some positive results sometime in the first quarter of, of 2023. Um, there's a new battery factory being built in Western Ontario, not that far away by Stellantis, and then another battery factory being built in Eastern Ontario. And then obviously we're close to the U.S. border and the opportunities in Detroit and other regions of, of the U.S. Um, if we were to be part of the supply chain and ultimately down the road supply lithium to these various projects. So we're well located, um, we're near infrastructure, um, we're near the U.S. border in Ontario and uh, in a good position hopefully to advance this project over the course of the winter. Thank you for that. Uh, Bra Brandy Klein wants to know if you share any resources with any majors in the area where you're drilling. Well, as I mentioned, we, we have proximity. Um, we do not have a resource calculation yet. We're still in the early stage stages of defining that. The purpose of our drilling in Clayton Valley is to determine if we have an economic resource, resource. Based on our drilling this summer, we know we have lithium. The question is, is do we have size and scale? So this phase two program here, uh, the goal here is to ultimately define if we have an economic resource. We're next to a $30 billion company on the New York Stock Exchange, one of the largest producers of lithium in the world at Silver Peak. Uh, there's known lithium that's been produced here since 1906, and we are their neighbor to the Northwest. So we are beside a major. Um, we're in the same ancient valley, and the key here for us is to determine whether we have a resource in Clayton Valley. The same in, in Manitoba. Um, although we're a neighbor, um, you know, there's no guarantee that we're going to have a resource there. But, you know, proximity is certainly favorable in us hopefully making a discovery. And this winter drill program in Manitoba will hopefully define that uh, in and around the Tanko in, uh, mine in Manitoba. There are a number of other companies exploring in, in, in all these regions. They're from small to large. Uh, these are very active areas. We've seen more boots on the ground in the last uh, few months than, than ever. And it makes it a really exciting time uh, as these projects are advanced. At Fish Lake Valley in Nevada, our neighbor at Rhyolite Ridge, uh, they're a billion and a half dollar Australian company. And they have offtake agreements at their project with Toyota, Panasonic, and Ford. So we have a world-class project next to us in Fish Lake Valley. Again, we're at very, the very early stage. We need to explore here, develop these projects, and hopefully um, make discoveries with the drill bit. And so this is an exciting time for investors. Um, Acme has a great portfolio of projects, and uh, we're hoping to deliver um, you know, with uh, key catalysts and milestones upcoming in 2023. Uh, William Motor has a question uh, regarding the Clayton Valley project and how much capital is re is required to develop a plant and drill enough wells to be cash flow positive? Well, that's a good question. And really, every project is is unique around the world. Um, this phase two program uh, that we're going to be doing over the course of, of the next few months uh, where we're going to be doing a test well and a pump test to understand the nature of the aquifer and we're going to be drilling uh, three more exploration holes i'll spend about two and a half to three million dollars as part of this phase two program and we have that capital to do that um, at that stage you know we'll have to understand whether or not we have an economic resource um, if we do again we won't know that until we finish this program if we do we will come out with uh, an inferred resource and then hopefully what, what's called a pre preliminary economic assessment. And so for us to determine the nature of the plant, um, the profitability, the economics, we, we, we will need to, to study uh, that resource calculation and costs uh, sometime uh, down the road. And that preliminary economic assessment will, will give us an understanding of how much money we need to st spend on the next phase. Um, so I think to answer that question fairly, um, we're going to need to do a lot of evaluation you know, over, the, over, over these months if we have success this winter season to understand the economics. At a skyrocketing lithium price, um, uh, it becomes certainly uh, favorable for, for many projects for us to, to ultimately be profitable. But we don't know that at this stage uh, we don't know the size of our resource, and so we'll get a better understanding of that hopefully sometime in 2023. 
what we will be able to do is we will be able to produce brine from our project and send it off to some of these direct lithium extraction companies who, who are wanting our brine. They want to test it at the bench scale. They want to test it in pilot plants to determine whether we can use DLE to extract lithium. Again, it's a smaller capex. Um, you're getting lithium out in a faster period of time. There's some huge advantages to it. So we'll be doing that as part of our phase two program and shipping brine off to some of these DLE companies. And that hopefully will reduce the cost of these projects and ultimately be in a situation where we can be cash flow positive down the road. So there's a, a bunch of steps we need to do. Um, these ultimately become um, multi uh, uh, tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in the way of these types of projects to ultimately get to flash uh, cash flow. These are multi-year projects. Um, but if you if you do reach these milestones down the road, um, uh, they end up being multi billion dollar companies. Um, so you know that's our goal. We're we're a small junior right now, uh, actively exploring, and our goal is to meet these various milestones and hopefully create value for shareholders over time. Fantastic, great presentation, Steve, and good luck in all these endeavors. What a time to be in this industry! And please come back with some updates. Great. Thanks, Anna, for your time. And again, feel free to reach out to me if anybody has any further questions and uh, look forward to delivering news over the course of the next few months that uh, is positive for our shareholders. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Have a great day. Thanks, Anna. Okay, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back with our next presenter.